Just having a, a conversation, and me and you talk about a lot of this, but about discipline and mm. this next phase, and I'm putting this to you too, it's going to require a certain type of discipline, but like it takes that, that mindset of like, all right, I need to go back, whatever that piece of hunger that fuels this 15, 16 year old self that you can kind of tap into or whatever the age is where you're like, I don't want to, I want to switch gears. You got to go find that person again. Mm. And- oh my goodness. <laughs> what's, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. Uh, I'm Jonathan Jones, and we're in the Speaker Success Media Studios. And man, I got my good guy, Mr. Marcus Gilmore. Do you still put the, you still go with the middle initial? Because I know you uh, changed yeah, it. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. I kind of go MG now with it. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, still yeah. Marcus Gilmore. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So, man, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you're that dude when it comes to marketing. <laughs> you're, you're that dude when it comes to live events. Every time I go to an event, which I don't go to events often anymore. I always see you there. Yeah, we always see each other. <laughs> we always run into each other everywhere. But man, Mar- Marcus, just take a second, man. Just introduce y- yourself a little bit to the audience about, you know, like a little bit about who you are, what you yeah. do. I'm, I'm going to let you do that, man. Cool, cool. Which camera? Here, here, here. Hey, well, you, this, this is your camera, but you know, this one both. But that's uh, your camera right so there. My name is Marcus Gilmore. I'm originally from the Dallas, Texas area. I grew up and went to uh, Duncanville High School. Uh, City of Champions, home of uh, some of the, the big time players that you see today uh, across sports. But um, from there, I went off to the University of North Texas and then ended up uh, being able to work for Tom Joyner um, here in the Dallas area. Uh, but again, my journey started in really the media and marketing space at the age of nine. I was uh, working at my church and working in the media space, so like filming. Uh, radio, um, and really just putting in the work. And it just started then. But um, now today, I work in experiential marketing. I work on uh, sports properties. Um, I have worked also from uh, with brands like being able to build their sports marketing programs within uh, their professional sponsorships. So that's what I want to share today. Because like, um, when you think about like your sports journey and for me like i went to a top tier high school where we traveled to play a lot of games we went across the state we played in a lot of the big tournaments uh my claim to fame is getting able to play against brandon jennings when he was at oak hill his last year um in dallas and what's crazy is i ran into him at the mcdonald's all-american game we brought him out for an event and um i had him in like waiting on him to go out and talk to some kids and i was like bro i'm mad at you and he was like why are you mad at me you're like i don't I don't know you. I was like, what's going on, ballers? You might be listening to this audio version of the podcast, or you might be watching even the video version of the podcast. And you're probably thinking, well, what would it take for John to come to our campus? What would it take for John to come to our school and to teach our students media training, to talk about podcasting and even the whole world of media? Well, luckily for you, all you have to do, friend, is just click the link just down below in the show notes where it says book John to speak. All right. And then we can go right there. We can set up time to have a conversation. And I would love to learn more about you, love to learn more about your student athletes and how we can serve and support them at a high level. Okay, so just hit the link just down below. And we look forward to having a conversation with you. 2007, we played your school in Dallas, Oak Hill versus Duncanville. And you beat us and you like ruined our 37 and 0. Like we hadn't lost the game. So, um, Again, it's, you know, the sports space is so vast, it's so deep, but um, at the end of the day, like the sports game teaches you so much and uh, the journey beyond that, beyond the ball is unique. And so I, w- I want to share that today and then talk about whatever, whatever we can we can squeeze into this episode. Yeah, man, yeah. for sure. Dang, that's, that's cool. cool. You went, no, no way, so were you, were you at what position? Like, did you match up with him? Were you shooting guard? Or uh, what's, all guard? right, so even though that's claim to fame, <laughs> I don't think I got off the bench that day. So, you that's know, fair. That's fair. Fair. you know, like when you look at today's AAU basketball space and the kids are like 70, like team is like eight deep mm. Duncanville at this time, we're probably eight deep. Not like we will only go coach was only going to mm-hmm. go eight or nine. For deep. sure. For sure. That game, he went like six and a half. Like, wow. 
and I'm just sitting there, you know, I always make this joke, like, especially my junior year early on, like some games I knew I wasn't going to play. I have a little peppermint in my pocket because, you know, you sit on the bench for a minute and your breath stink. You need something to, to pop in there. But, um, yeah, I didn't get a chance to play against him on the court. But, it, you know, at the same time, like, it's it's being able to see a kid who at that time, you know, he was going pro. And he um, he's the reason that any of these players today, the NIL space, any of that is a nod to him because he's one of the first ones. He's a pioneer of that space, being able to go overseas and make the money and then come back and go straight to the pros. I think LaMelo Ball is like the second coming of that. Because, yeah. You know, LaMelo went 16 overseas and then comes back and then plays at a this private school. And then the first thing, I mean, he already has a brand that does pop-up shops and all this kind of stuff. Like they, those kind of two players are your reason. They have a blueprint that people follow today. Wow, I didn't even I didn't even know that. That that's yeah, wild. Yeah. That's because I mean I mean I, I remember seeing stuff like either like I, I was past high school, but this is around the time when I can't remember what athlete it was, but I remember there was an athlete like sixteen in between that like sixteen eighteen range, but just after they said you got at least go one year, you yeah. know, to hoop in college, and then the guy was like, man, but I don't want to hoop in college, so then he went overseas. Yep, and came back over. But yeah, I think Brandon Jennings is probably one of the first ones that took it to that level because before that, I mean, you have your LeBron, your Darius Miles, like they're all going straight to the league. And then after that, they make that rule. Mm -hmm. And then I think Brandon Jennings is like, he's 09 or 08 or something like that. Or 07. So that's the year of that, that clause, I think. Man. So he's probably, yeah. He put the template together. Man. Okay. So, so when like going, going, going through, you know, going through your journey, like with hoop and all that, when, when did you get bit by the marketing bug? What's crazy is that, like, playing AAU basketball, the, the guys that actually were on my basketball team, they were pretty ranked. They were ranked really high. They were sponsored by Adidas. Um, and they're still my good friends today. I go watch they coach uh, in the DFW area, and they some went overseas as well. But they were sponsored by Adidas. And so that's how, when I, like, started to see, okay, there's this – play that is happening amongst us that there we got the shoes we got gear and stuff I still wear like I still have some stuff in my closet today um and then after like when I went to college and I got out of college I when I worked for Tom Joyner he would like allow me to do marketing things for HBCUs and that was like I would just go to travel to HBCU um football games and like classics which is huge amongst that community mm -hmm. and would spend a couple weekends and like raising money for these schools but at the same time i'm paying attention to like all right this game specifically brings out alumni from across the u.s mm -hmm. to come up into to come to a city and begin to like fund their school but also just participate um but then in 2017 like there was an opportunity to join a a marketing program called Verizon Ad Fellows, and um, they offered to move you to New York. I'm like, all right, <laughs> wait a minute. All right, we're going to go. Um, and so I went to, I did that program. It was uh, eight months, and then my last rotation, so you went to different, four different companies, but my last rotation, um, I got to a company called Momentum Worldwide. Momentum Worldwide is a experiential agency, meaning they build experiences for their brand. They don't do commercials. They don't do social. They don't do PR. They don't do talent. We go in, we look at a space, we build it for our clients and set up like two to three day events for people and consumers to get acquainted with that brand. So um, that was the moment. Like um, everything built up to that, that time, wow. right? Like, I, I mean, I didn't go off to college to play basketball. You know, you pay at school, but I knew that, like, once I left the high school space, I was like, all right, we got to change it up. We got to figure out what else is next. Went into business, went into television, and then marketing kind of just folded out of that. Man, so, yeah. oh, wait, 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 wait. I know my story jumped wait. a little bit. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just saying this thing about experiential marketing. Yeah. So they don't, so they're not... 
like like so may, maybe they utilize social media but yeah, yeah. but that, but they don't like invest in it like how some people would put those big dollars up for ads and stuff it's yeah. like the focus is the, these events these events because when you think about like um these like an agency like momentum and and they're a part of a larger kind of holding company but when you look at the client the client may have an agency, they call them agency of record. So you have an agency of record for social, you got an agency of record for PR, you got an agency of record for experiential, and then you got an agency of record for media, which is buying ads and all of that stuff. Well, we all work together across the board. Mm -hmm. And um, so let's say we are doing an event, um, we'll work with that social team or that talent team to be like, and I think, well, stand corrected there, our agency did have a talent arm so we did bring in talent from our side, but there was there were moments where we just partner across, right? And so one of my favorite moments working at the company was um, working on Super Bowl 54. So I fly to Miami, I'm there for eight days. We built this crazy dome, like it's, it's like a, basically like a house and it's all VR, AR kind of space. And I mean, Russell uh, Wilson comes through, all these NFL players come through. Um, but we built this space to promote Verizon's 5G, like they are about to come out with that. So, um, it, it's a, it's a unique space to be in, like a brand that again, working at that company, like they focused on Verizon sports sponsorship. So if you watch any NFL game and you see a Verizon check mark, a Verizon logo, the, there's an agency that's probably putting on activations around that game. Like. We may be doing something outside or inside. And so um, that was my first kind of experience there and went to another company and now work on a McDonald's All-American game and done that for three years now. So it's been a, a journey. Oh, Hoopers, like, it's such a Hooper's like full circle. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if I mean, for sure. Because yeah. I mean, you know, the McDonald's, when I was a kid, like in high school, I remember I used to, I used to want the McDonald's All-American shorts. Like yeah. I knew I wasn't gonna be McDonald's. Yeah. I, at my high school, my high school was my, my high school was Wheeler High School. So Sharif Abdul Rahim mm -hmm. and yep. JJ Hickson and some other guys like came through there, and I knew that there was no like they were they were grown men. Yeah. At, at JV, <laughs> it's like what is going on right yeah, now? Like these yeah. are grown men. It's different. Uh, yeah, it's it's real different. So I knew that that wasn't going to be a thing for me. Mm -hmm. But bro, you got to talk about talk about this McDonald's All American experience because I saw because I, I saw uh, you know so, some of your some of your content you posted on Instagram and I yeah. saw you know Ashley was out there and I yeah. was like oh y'all yeah. out here yeah. killing it. I was like what's up man? Man, this is this was my third year doing the McDonald's All American and again like full circuit full circle basketball prestige moment like there's this pinnacle that high school athletes all want to get to right before you, especially if you're a top tier athlete, you have this board where um, actually Jared McCain, who's at Duke right now, he'll probably be a top 25 NBA draft pick this year, but he has a, he did, he used to really go hard at his blogs and want on his like list was McDonald's all American. And you have to think that like these kids that are, rank really high or, or play on the circuits and stuff like that they actually have a list of things like it's gatorade player it's mcdonald's all american mm. it's all district it's state champ like all of these things and so to know that there are kids that play their heart out to get to a space where i'm curating for them i take it as just like i'm like I have the same mindset as them. Like, I got to make sure this moment is lit. This is the best moment they have prior to going to college. Because after this game, truthfully, they go to prom. They may play in some other kind of, like, showcases or whatever. After that, they're not regular truly anymore, right? Like, mm -hmm. especially if you're, like, a top player, you go, you go to college, you're going to be, I guess you go to class, but you go to college and you, you're there. And then you go off to the pros and like then you go may go overseas and then you go, like your life is not truly the same you this is my your last moment of to be around family and to be super innocent and i take that like to heart and i make sure that those moments are created so uh i mean again this year we did it in houston for the second year in a row and um 
this was like, it was amazing to be a part, to create this experience. And so I, uh, you know, again, I don't think about like the, the McDonald's part. I think about just like, how can I make sure that these kids have a, a good time and make sure that their all American experience is unlike anybody other, because it, the, there's only so many names that are on this list of mm-hmm. basketball players and, and from the WNBA to the NBA, there's a small list there. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, thinking about like even Ashley being there, like I saw her and I was like, heck yeah, like, let's go. Like, because she's a hooper. Yeah. Her yeah. podcast is straight on the hooper side. And, you know, we played at Duncanville together and I was there and she's was the only, she was one of the first freshmen ever to play varsity at Duncanville high school. That's crazy. Ever to put like for on the girl side, I think the yeah, guys, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, Sean and um, Roger would have, they were the first on for the boys, but um, yeah, Ashley Roberts was the the first on the girl side. It's man. crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be like crazy, man. Yeah, city of champions so for a reason. Y'all, up, y'all love <laughs> the chain, man. Yeah, y'all love the chain. Yeah. So, like, okay, so talk, talk, I want I want I want to hear just a little bit more about this ex- exper- yeah. experiential marketing. So, mm-hmm. like, okay, so. Like, how does the process work? So, like, yeah. they, they re- reach out to y'all, and then it's like, okay, we meet in the boardroom, and then, like, y'all start yeah. laying stuff, like, timeline. What does that look like? Yeah, so I want, I want to break that down because I think about, like, the audience that is hearing this for maybe the first time and understanding, like, in the in sports, there are, um, there are sponsorships, right? We look at the arenas. We look at the jersey patches. They're, the brands that you see on the jersey patches, they are sponsors of that team. Mm-hmm. When they can't just sponsor, they can, they can, but just putting a number, let's say a million dollars down and be like, I'm going to sponsor you for three years. And they put a jersey patch on there. Mm-hmm. If I'm a brand, I say, you know what? I have to get a little bit more value out of just being a patch. I need to... Um, I need to have like a row of seats at the arena that I can give away to my consumers. So let's use a um, a bank, right? Like if I was Capital One and Capital One has a sponsorship of the arena for the Wizards. So when you go to a Capital One or you go to the Wizards game or that arena, if you have a Capital One card, you can you get 10% off every concession stand. So in a way, that's experiential marketing. Like they are bringing value to their consumers Ex- and experiential is truly defined by you bringing experiences from a to a consumer that they can either uh, use with either one of their senses right they can see it they can feel it they can experience it or touch smell there's some type of experience that exchange for the value of that brand and I use like again capital one there's the experience of a money exchange where all right, they got a 10% sponsorship every time I come in there. I use my card, I get 10% off every food. And I don't know if that percentage is correct, but it's something like that. Mm-hmm. Then there's like a row of seats. And then there's maybe a, a lounge that only I can get in because I'm a Capital One card user. So when you think about experiential and the in sports, like you, another example is like you go to Jerry's World right now. And as soon as you come in, it's a, it's truly experiential all the way through, right? Mm-hmm. The screen, Miller Lite, it's the brand, I think, uh, Miller Lite. And anytime you come into his arena, you know that you're going to have some type of tie to a brand. The brand is going to do something. And the goal is truly to make you more of a brand loyal fan. And that's what he's truly trying to do. Capital One is truly trying to do. It's like, you, I'm creating a space that you will continue to use my brand versus any other. And when you look at like how brands that use this in any, in other spaces in music and uh, with even the NIL deals, like they want some value exchange. It doesn't always have to be a dollar exchange. I can get more consumers, more data, more like user downloads. Um, even like with some things we do with McDonald's, like if you notice, they push a lot of the app, right? Like, and, and I'm okay saying this, but like, they push a lot of the, the app. So when I build my events to come to my event, you got to have an app mm. now. Like, because I know that's the business KPI experiential. Like I don't need to McDonald's is a place for everybody. That's why in, 
I mean, you can go in there today. We can go take the kids, take the family, you can take your grandma. Doesn't matter. McDonald's is a place for everybody. But the transition of their usage is more of uh, their um, kind of consumer behavior is like making sure people are using the app too, right? So now I know that. I attend the meetings. I hear that. I'm like, all right, bet, right? Right? Come to my event. You got to use the app. Mm-hmm. And so like that's part of experiential is one, understanding a business KPI, but then two, of being able to apply it to an event that goes back to the brand. And that's what they like to see. Man, that makes me think of um, just like some of the stuff that I've seen. Well, I had two thoughts. Yeah. But that makes me think of some of the stuff that I've seen a couple years back with South by Southwest. Because mm-hmm. you know how they have though, like you, they have a lot of free events happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then even outside of that, there's certain events where, of course, you need this wristband or that wristband. And then, you know, you're required to, you know, uh, it's like an app or something. Mm-hmm. Like they'll put out some way to get people into this concert that, you didn't know it was a thing. It's not yeah. publicly displayed. It's not. Um, and it's, it's about like, it's about users, right? We want more users. We want people on the platform. So um, if you have an app, the probably a way to like gain a lot of users is, all right, I'm going to host a party. Come mm. to my party. All you got to do is show the app. Mm. Now you got to understand people will delete the app after. But some, is true. There is a, uh, a drop off where people are going to delete the app, but then there's some people that keep it. And they may keep it for a month and they forget they have it. You run push notifications. So, you know, like then you get them back in the app. Um, but that ties back to experiential, right? Like it's some, it's an experience that is built around a KPI that the brand may have. And um, again, thinking about this audience, like you may play sports, but you can go into sports marketing. And in sports marketing, doesn't have to be social media, which is cool too, mm-hmm. right? Or photography or whatever, or, but like, if, if I had to go back and let's say I made it to college and play sports and I just felt like, all right, pros is probably not it. I'm probably going to go look for a brand ambassador company and then get on the experiential mm. team because I want to go to events. I want to go to free sporting events. Mm-hmm. I can tell you right now, bro, I've been to soccer games, hockey, baseball, football, basketball, the um, the USA soccer team, like the kids, the 16 and under, I went to a whole tournament all weekend. I've never seen the coldest kids in my life. Like they're so good. And just because of experiential marketing has taken me to these spaces and Man. sponsorships and stuff like that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty. And then another thing, so another thing I thought of. Yeah. I thought of Childish Gambino because mm. you were talking about Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Because I thought he was done with music. Nah, man. I, didn't he say he was done with music? He did say that. I was about to say, I knew I wasn't tripping because I was reading what you posted the other day. I was like, bro, he said he was done with music. Man, you know, like, that's a creator, bro. He is. Once you get it in, and we were talking about this earlier, but like, sometimes a person like that, he just thinks and thinks and thinks. And then he may get to a point where he's like he's thought so much and he's come up with so many ideas that he's ready to open the door and let it out to the world mm. that's not everybody not like that and some really do stick by their side and say or stick to their their word and say they're not going to put out anything but for sure but yeah i mean but but for him i yeah. mean i was i was thinking about him because uh, you know seeing well for one i was thinking about him because what you're saying about experiential you know just the experiential experience <laughs> but i went to one of his concerts yeah. and one i didn't know who his audience was was but mm-hmm. it was like 16 year old kids yeah like 16 year old white asian but like whatever was yep. out there it was more people that weren't black than that oh, were yeah this yeah. is probably like i'm not sure how many years ago but it was south side lamar mm-hmm. and bro first of all it turned into like a mosh pit situation have you been in a mosh pit before not a true mosh pit. <laughs> not, not a true mosh pit, but it was like that whole type vibe. And yeah. then when I tell you he's an artist artist? Yeah, 100%. He had, the, he had of course, the creative going on stage. Mm-hmm. And he walked through, I think at that point it was like three albums. He walked through all three of them albums, bro. Didn't have no opener. He no, was he the opener. Come. I wonder if we were at the same show. If it was Southside South 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 Lamar, Lamar yeah. I think this was after, um, this wasn't after camp. This was after the ne- that yeah, next this one is came like out. 2012, 13, 
2012, 2011, something like that. It's, I remember being at this show. That sound, it sounds about right. Because then I went to try to watch him at a festival, and it was a different experience because it's at a festival, so you have a different energy. But I remember the, the South, that was South Salomon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, talk, talk. Okay, so so share share about that. Share yeah. about, like like just talk a little bit about that, because uh, I know because you I know what you you've been concert stuff like that. Mm. Why is it different in mm. terms of the concert vibe versus the festival vibe? And when I hear festival, I think people putting one up in the air. You know, even at yeah. concerts sometimes. People, yeah, I mean, but what, but what like. It's a, help, it's, help me out. It's a mix of audiences. So the lineup may have, and, and what's crazy is that I was um, at McDonald's All America. We brought out Mexican OT this year, who's uh, really on the rise. He's from Texas. And, uh, you know, he has songs with Paul Wall, and he, he's really just probably going to blow here this summer. Um, and I told him that I had saw his set it rolling loud on youtube like i watch a lot if i can't make it to a festival um you're rolling louds and you're like um what's j cole's festival called dreamville dreamville mm. like they've partnered with amazon which i think is a really dope sponsorship mm. um but they have created a way for people outside the walls of that festival to watch it and um so i was talking to mexican ot and i was like man i saw your your set and i thought you know i enjoyed it like I've seen kind of your clips, but like, that was cool to just see you perform in that space. He was like, yeah, but next time I need you to pull up to a show because it's curated by me. So when you go to a festival, it's curated by so-and-so festival, right? Like Mm. they put together all these people. But what you have to understand is that they, there's a crowd that comes at 12 to see rising artist a mm. then there's a crowd that come at five that is coming to see a mexican ot now the crowds are blending so it's almost like there's these pockets of energy like that you know it takes a minute where like by the time it gets to nine o'clock travis scott comes out don tolliver mm. you know all these artists like they have such a widespread audience that they can get everybody going where maybe a mexican ot is still in that space where mm-hmm. artists are still trying to, or talented um, consumers are still trying to understand maybe who he is. Mm-hmm. So there's an energy pocket, right? But he has the music that'll garner you. Be like, dang, I heard that before. And mm-hmm. he'll get you going. So I think that's what it is. It's curated by the festival versus curated by that artist. Like when you look at a Donald Glover, Glover uh, tour, it's gonna be cu- like, you know that from the, once the door is open, it's up. like. <laughs> Whoever he has opening and then him, they and know what to expect when they come into the show. So I think that like that's the difference there. Family, I know you're enjoying this episode so far. I know you've been taking in the content and I hope you're taking notes, right? I hope you're taking notes. But if you have not just yet hit that follow button on the podcast i need you to hit it i need you to hit it okay because i want you to be tapped in to where you get the latest episodes and even when we drop some surprise bonus episodes you want to be the first to know and you want to be the first to get it okay so wherever you're listening to this podcast at right now apple spotify wherever go ahead hit that follow button so you're tapped in and you get the episodes first all right now back to the episode yeah. Gotcha. Because I don't, I don't know if I've ever been to a festival. I think the closest thing I've ever been to a festival, and I'm only saying this, I guess, just because, uh, what, this, I think this was when it was the Smirnoff Center, and this was when it was Rock the Mic. Like, when they kind of had, yeah, that was a while ago, bro. That was a while ago. You have to get, are you go, you're not going to Togetherland? It's here. It's going to be in Dallas. I, I saw, I, I just need to check the date and just make sure, ain't that, but I've seen the lineup. It's yeah, crazy. It's a good lineup. Cause Cause I, even, is it? And I even see, and I even see, uh, my, my guy David Shands is gonna be there. Oh, really? Yeah, he's gonna oh, do a cool. fireside chat. Yeah. With, I'm not sure if he's doing it with KG or who, but yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, that, I think that's exciting to see something um, to the, of that magnitude to come here to Dallas. I think that's super important that uh, we get seen in that light. So yeah, because I mean, the other, the one I'm talking about, like the Rock the Mic. I think it was well, I feel, this was this was this was when Fifty Cent was out there performing and he was like, hey, y'all want me to do another, y'all want me to do another song? And he was like, yeah, yeah. 
He was like, all right, well, I want y'all, when y'all hear people saying, hey, 50 Cent's a bad guy and all this, because Jay-Z was coming out after him. Mm. And I think this is when something stirred up there. Oh, wow. This, 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 this was a, it was a minute ago, bro, because I was a kid when this happened. Okay. I'm like, because I, I would, if Jay-Z's in Dallas, I'm pulling up. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was a it was a it was a while ago. Oh, okay. It was it was a while okay. ago. Okay. So yeah. So man, oh, we said Jay Z. I yeah. gotta ask you this. What what makes Jay Z so great? And I know this ain't an experience of marketing, but I just gotta <laughs> ask you. Like I, I'm because I, I, I know who? you know music. The artist or the person? At, that, at the brand. The brand. The, the the brand. We can talk about that in a second. All right. But lyrically, is he really there? Because people be saying, like, people be talking about him like he just. I, I'm a Wayne person. I'm Wayne. I get you. And I know Wayne always speaks highly of Jay-Z. Like, he always gives him. That's fair. I'm yeah. a Wayne. <laughs> when I say lyrics, I, what's crazy? I'm writing here, and I have on dedication, the first dedication, which is old. Mm. on CD. I found it in the garage and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm visiting, so I'm at the parents' house and I found it in the garage. I'm not going to play this. Let me see what I remember. Oh, I can go like 10 songs. Yeah. <laughs> Bars, like, and I'm like, I'm just going. I'm like, Wayne is it. Now, what's interesting is like when I moved to New York and like I would go out, I didn't understand why they were playing. Like there are Jay-Z songs that are like ingrained in New York culture. Mm. that never made it to the South. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know them. But uh -huh. after a while, I did pick them up, which is Jay-Z songs. Um, what's another guy? Bobby nah. Schmurder, like oh, all okay. the, they all, Nas. They nah, say even Nas, Nas, the like, Queensbridge movement. There's so many songs, like there are songs that they can play. Like You know how like in Dallas, they'll play like our songs in a certain pocket. Mm -hmm. They'll do that in New York. And I'm just standing there. I'm like, bro, I hate, I do not know this song. And I had to like learn yeah. certain songs. Like, of course, we know 99 Problems. It made it of to course. the mainstream, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah, like, yeah. But it, it took me a minute to like get used to that. But I say all to say, I'm a Wayne person. Jay-Z's great because he like, he rapped about what he was really going through and really kept evolving. So like his music mm. evolves. Like we can go play 444 right now and you're like, your mindset is saying, because of what stage we're in in our mm -hmm. life, we can take that and immediately apply. But I can't go back to, I don't even know, that's sad, but like whatever the, the blueprint. Blueprint, right? Like, yeah, that am was, I really going to apply that right now? But 444, I can be like, mm, I need to buy art. <laughs> <laughs> like, need me to buy art, sip wine. <laughs> sip wine, I need to buy art. It's that, uh, you know, that, that's my take on it. But as a, the brand, it's up there. Probably top three right now of like mogul brand people. I think he's up there. And he just doesn't like, he can, what I love about him is he can, about his journey, he can sell and move on. Right? Like a lot mm -hmm. of guys, like our moguls of today, they hold and hold and keep people. Nah, bro. What? Aces? I don't know if he sold, but like title. And I got to keep, keep that little piece. Yeah, I keep a little piece. I need two percent. I don't need fifty anymore. I move down to two, whatever his number is. I don't know his true number, but like, mm. I can sell, take that money. Now I'm finna go flip, and flip because he's a hustler. So his mindset is like, oh. I take my money out that I got. Yeah. Where if you don't grow up in that environment and you grow up in a different type of environment where you buy and hold or buy and like keep building because you want to say uh -huh. I got all this stuff yeah. he like I know I created something I got down to 50 me and my wife got whatever the number is and now I'm at 50 all right now I'm at 40 bro 10 and I'm out like mm -hmm. and then now he didn't made all of this app still exists in some kind of capacity mm -hmm. he used to host concerts and all of that like talks oh, I used to go to all of this in New York like that's the reason I had titles because it got me it got me into exclusive events in New York to have a title app. So I got rid of Spotify, Apple, and I would go to see like DJ Khaled and Elliot Wilson and Martin Lawrence. Like they had events that only was visible on the app. So again, going back to what we were saying earlier, like mm -hmm. experiential is, could be like app based. The more people have the app, the more you can come to my event. And Man. it's just, 
It's just different. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Jay Z. Okay, yeah, Jay Z. Yeah. So who 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 like either who or what brands do like you look up to and you get inspiration from? You're like, oh, this person's on a cutting edge. This mm-hmm. is like like you know that like they're up next type deal. Yeah, I mean, right now it's probably. Um, um, I would say like New Balance is definitely going really hard in like the partnership space. Um, from a mogul standpoint, it's probably Kevin Hart. Man, like now Man. you know the is he funny? If you ask all that, people try to like create. I don't even get into it. I just be like, bro, the roast with Tom Brady. Then he comes out with the. The thing, the, the road. First of all, I, me, I, I gotta, I gotta you interrupt you, bro. So, I told, I told my home grad work. I said, say, I said, and he, mind you, he's emceeing. Yeah. But I was like, that's the Kevin Hart that we knew at Seriously Funny. Yeah. This is him. Yep. 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 And go, going, just going back to what you said earlier about him, he's at the point now to where, me personally. I don't think he's trying to be fun. It's kind of like LeBron and hooping. LeBron is still hooping, but it's not like ball is life. Yeah, no. It's no, like, no, no. no, we over here, Spring Hill. We yeah. over here, Space mm-hmm. Jam. We over yep. here doing the podcast. Got another one. We got the shot. Like, yeah. But go ahead. I, I, catch I, you I mean, up. like, Kevin is probably shifting the gears the most right now, where he's like, like you said, like, all right, we go back three years ago, pandemic. Everybody else sit down. He dropped a movie with him and Wesley Snipes. And that was... and, then, and it, not a movie series, excuse me, series. And it's and it go hard, right? Hard based on his life. Hard. Then he has his low, you know, like his outside world kind of causes like the ripple with, you know, in life. But life happens, whatever. When I talk about mogul status and know how to shift. <laughs> That's my like moving in the floor. Yeah, I see you shifting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is that he's one that like really makes the move. And it's no it, maybe I'm not privy to it, but there's no bad business deals that we hear. Like there's no scandals where you'd be like, dang, why you you kinda maybe hold somebody real quick? But he's not I haven't heard any. Maybe yeah. I maybe missed something, but mm-hmm. like I, I haven't heard nothing. But mm-hmm. that Tom Brady, you already that's the fandom that comes with Tom Brady is love and hate. One, he's a Philly Eagles person, right? And he's the Patriots. Uh-huh. Why are y'all even, even in Philly, it's really Philly and Cowboys, but like anybody Philly versus everybody. That's their it, It's definitely Philly versus everybody. Patriots versus everybody. He yeah. knows I can do that and just kept, like nobody gets to make fun of Tom Brady in that format like nobody talks about tom brady outside of sports so him being able to be like no i'm gonna do a roast with you yeah tom brady would only do a roast with somebody that he respects their game kevin hart Mm -hmm. then he turns around and does the stand-up on the um it's something that's out right now but like you can see his shift every single time and it just big bag big bag and it's like and i watch his interviews i'm like yeah because he knows how to get it going when he's being interviewed, but then there's some behind the scenes, you're like, bro, you're a hustler. There's no sleep. It really started oh, at 5 a.m. for real, for real. Yeah, yeah, like for, like, have you, you seen the 60 Minutes interview? Yeah, that's the what I'm talking I, about, yeah. Yeah, It bro. really started and, at a real 5 a.m., like, out the bed, you, it's go time. Like, bro. going. Like, cause he was talking about, uh, in the interview, he was talking about how, how, how they, they get back on the road, and you know, like he puts himself, and I've, I've heard, I've heard a few people say this, uh, one of the guys, his name is Justin Phillips, he was was a co-founder of Support Black College, even mm. though he sold his part. Anyway, yeah. but he, I, I heard him talk and share about how he would like sleep on the floor, like in his apartment, not get in the bed, like just to where he's, like he creates that environment mm. of that grind, you gotta like that grind. uncomfortability. And that's what Kevin Hart was saying in that interview. It was like, you know, we go, we travel. And he was like, bad travel. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just staying in these hole-in-the-wall spots yeah. to, I, I guess, recreate something that, you know, that he naturally doesn't have to be in that position. He can go yeah. to the Ritz or yeah, wherever you want to go. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, you know, not to deviate here, but no, 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 I, was having, I was having a, a conversation. And me and you talk about a lot of this, but about discipline. 
And mm. this next phase, and I'm putting this to you too, it's going to require a certain type of discipline. But like, it takes that that mindset of like, all right, I need to go back. Whatever that piece of hunger that fuels this 15, 16 year old self that you can kind of tap into or whatever the age is where you're like, I don't want to, I want to switch gears. You got to go find that person again mm. and reconnect whatever the little, what's the um, 16 chapel where the fingers, oh. <laughs> you got to do that <laughs> in this moment. It's just, that's the phase we were about to go in. And I just, I know that about myself. I know that about the the guys that are around me, like we're about to just make this next shift. And, um, and it was about, we were talking about discipline, what um, the guy I was talking to, but you know, you look at Kevin Hart, that's a certain type of discipline, bro. That's a, that, that, it's, it, that's a by any means necessary any type means. discipline. And uh, like you said, he could sit. He could really chill. He, he's, he's good. Yeah. He's and good. I ain't count nobody pockets, but yeah, boy, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he may be he, all right, man. He, he, he's 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 good. he's good. Yeah, bro. So yeah, and it's funny. It's funny you actually say that because I was thinking literally um, earlier today because this past year I really didn't do much speaking. Mm-hmm. Right, I I, I kind of took it. My son, you know, is one one years old now. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. man. Thank you, man. Oh, yeah. Boy. It's 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 super, Have you super seen cool, man- mannerism shit or it's not time where it's like. Consistent mannerism or mannerisms, you like. All right, we're gonna have to we have to shake that one out of you, or it's not time yet. Yeah, well, so I haven't I haven't really seen mannerism. Well, in terms of mannerisms oh, that like yeah, I do or like my wife does, yeah. but we we just see him coming into his own, bro. Mm, I love it. Like yeah. it's just coming in, in in the way like we I've had conversations with my wife, and it's just like letting him be a boy. Yeah, he's gonna fall. All right, get up, get up, get up, and. And now he's not to the point where he falls. He'll like cry. I mean, here and there. But yeah, yeah. It's like get up, come on, come on. Or I'll toss him a ball, and then he'll just keep moving. Yeah. So it, it's it's just really really dope to see. That's cool. But I'm I'm connecting this to what you were saying. Like in terms of the discipline, because the type of life that I want for him to have. Yeah. Like I want him to never want for anything. I want to be able to for him to have whatever opportunities that he wants. Mm-hmm. I want to do this. I want to try this. Let's be able to get it. Yeah. To your point. That that requires something different. It's different. And bro, what what I've been so I don't know if you even noticed, but what I've been doing past what I'm not sure how long it's been, but basically I've been doing two webinars a week, mm. typically Sunday and Thursday, mm-hmm. two webinars a week. But that's on one side of my business. That's not even really on the speaking side. But now on the speaking side, and I didn't tell you this, but I'm about to wrap it up with LinkedIn. I'm it's about to shift gear, time. bro. LinkedIn, like LinkedIn. When I tell you the LinkedIn reach out gang, when I tell you, and I say this all the time, LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn is LinkedIn, the wild west, wild, wild west, man. LinkedIn. First of all, th- this is how I know the value of LinkedIn. I knew the value before. Yeah. But then when I saw them do seventy nine a month, right? Mm. Now you pay a month. If you pay monthly, it's ninety nine a month. And I'm like, say for the LinkedIn premium. Yeah. And and then I I, I really saw the game change when they started saying. You only can send out five connection requests a That's month. That's all you can do. If when, you, I, when I saw that, I said, oh, people like like either more people are coming onto the platform or, or LinkedIn is really just starting to understand the what they really have. They have. Yeah. Yep. That's why, like, I mean, you see me there, like, on the lives. <laughs> you see me with the posts. I, and it don't matter. You have to be on there every day. You got to be on there every day because... The, algorithm is still understanding what's going on and some stuff will go and mm-hmm. then some stuff won't like it's just that and I, i'll say this to the people listening about even when we talk about sports and and going beyond the ball but like if i'm in college right now i'm going to every i'm looking up every brand that is in the sports space mm-hmm. or is sports adjacent that is sponsoring the cowboys the mavs the ace the WNBA aces any Sorry, any sponsor that sponsors the, the WNBA and NBA, I'm following them on LinkedIn. Mm. Because they're because their sponsorship dollars can't, I'm not confirming if this is true or not, but like their marketing sponsorship dollars is split between two platforms or two um, professional leagues. Mm. So that means that they're equally like putting, in, they're putting value in both. 
So if I'm coming out of college and I'm like, dang, I don't know where I want to go. I'm going to look at which brand is sponsoring both leagues. They don't all sponsor, right? Like your Starry, your Ruffles. Those are like dual. They're sponsoring both sides. Um, there's some other brands. If I'm coming out of, if I'm in women's sports and I'm like, I don't know where to go. I'm going to the NWSL, so the National Women's Soccer League, as well as uh, Major League Soccer and WNBA. And I'm going to go look at any brands that are sponsoring the second tier. So not your big name brand sponsors. I'm picking up the beauty brands, the jewelry brands, um, feminine products. I'm going to go figure out how they are spending, not spending their dollars, but how they showing up. So if Dove Secret, which is, I think, a WNBA sponsor, I'm going to figure out how I can get over to Dove and get to the Unilever, which is their um, what they're under. But figure out how to get to Unilever. I'm going to figure out how to get on sports teams because... I was still, you still want to be involved in sports, but strategically, you go to LinkedIn mm-hmm. and you type in Unilever. And you type in Unilever Sports or any dub. And then, you know, you only got five, so you need to yeah. be very strategic <laughs> how many, how many yeah. messages you send. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a, a way to attack and a way to, like, put yourself on the path versus just shooting just so many options out there. Like, no, be strategic. Like, yeah, hunt. sniper. Yeah, sniper. Yeah. Who makes that reference? I, I've uh, heard Eric I've heard, Thomas. I'm about to say, yeah. I heard ET. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah. It's like, don't wake up Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, you like Jason Bourne, where you like, that's it. In focus, boom. Like, you really like be sharp about how you are going beyond the ball, how you thinking about your career after sports, even if it's coaching, like be strategic on understanding where these teams are moving. If they're moving conferences, if they are putting more on social versus like not like be strategic on where you go, because I mean, that's, that's part of your journey. You can't just assume people are going to like do what you expect them to do. Like, you know, you got to go seek that out and find it. Yeah, man. And I mean, that's that's the approach I didn't, I took on LinkedIn. Bro, when I tell you, I didn't slid in. First of all, I mean, social as a whole. Yeah. Like, I don't care about the followers. I don't care about the likes, the comment. Like, I mean, y'all can keep that. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, look good. Y'all can keep that. Mm-hmm. I'm finding people's names. I'm sliding in DMs. Yeah. Some Link, people, LinkedIn especially, though. Some people respond and some people don't. My, my I was um talking to my... Um, my founder at the agency I'm at now, uh, we are social uh, narrative and we are social. And, um, and we, the founder, one of the founders for the narrative group, um, is a woman and she, uh, super smart and a hustler from uh, East coast as well, Jersey. And, um, when I met her, when I found out that her agency was the sponsor or created the, uh, Travis Scott meal and was part mm-hmm. of the Travis Scott like event uh, okay. meal with McDonald's. Um, I was like, all right, I gotta go find who this was. I figured, found her name, sent her a message. She responded after a couple days, oh, wow. and I was like, hey, let's do a call. A couple of days went by, no response. Hey, you know, I love what you all are doing. Like, we'd love to connect. Finally got her information. Then I got her email. I sent her another email. No response. Then I finally got a call. Did my spiel, you know what I'm saying? Chop it up. After that, I was like, all right, let me go back and do my thing every month. Every month. And then one year, we go, this is like the following year. I end up getting hired following year. We're out. We're talking or whatever. Um, and, and and one thing about this company that I'm at now is I learned how to, they call it schmoozing. Like, I learned how to... Mm-hmm hang out and, you know, have conversations and know how to steer conversations that go beyond the weather. Like, let's uh-huh. talk about career, but let's not talk about work at the table. Like, uh-huh. it's a unique skill to, like, not talk about work at the table, but talk about interests that kind of get back to the work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm learning how to schmooze because I work on uh, more of an account side versus production. Um, but anyways, when... when I was sitting with her. She was like, you hustled to get here. Like, you hit me up. 
you, you reached out so many times and like, that's what I knew we needed at this company. And I was like, you're right. I appreciate that. Like it's, it's about like going over and beyond and not letting the ego stop you. Shrink that ego, mm-hmm. push it down and go after what you want. You know, man, yeah, that's real though. Yeah, that, that, that's real. Every, cause every time I have seen you have been, you know, hustling, move, moving around at, at all the events. Every time, every time I see you, even though I know you still don't live in Dallas, yeah. but if I don't think about it for a second, I would think you still live in Dallas. That's how it's, that's how I want to feel. Yeah, that, that's yeah. how that's how I felt when I saw you so like, this day, weekend. Yeah, I was, was like, what? <laughs> Why are you out here in Bishop Arts? What I'm like happening? chilling near Bishop Arts, like the Bishop Arts area, which is, uh, I mean, that's a whole other story that I will find for another day. It's just like <laughs> how that area has grown, and it's like it's a place you kick me. Yeah. Bowman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna go get ready to land this plane. Go get okay. ready to land this plane. But uh, man, so there, there, I, I like to I like to do this segment. I like mm. to call call it uh, "Who's Coming to Dinner." Mm. So if you had the chance to sit down with three people, you don't have to name three, but I mean, mm-hmm. if I was you, I'd you know take all three to chairs. But mm-hmm. you can name three people, living or dead, don't matter mm. where they were in time, whatever. Yeah. Who are three people you bringing to dinner to sit down have a conversation? Mm. That's a great question. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I think that like, I gotta think, give me five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Who's um, coming to dinner? Who is coming to dinner? I would say, and and I'm probably gonna mess up names, but I know there are people's faces that are. Um, I probably would do Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, Kiyosaki, mm. I would definitely sit down with him. Mm-hmm. Now, you gotta be on point with your conversation because he could probably take you to a level, and you like. I can't imagine, <laughs> bro. That's, that's you know that's so real. Like people don't know that, but there are, there are people that I know. If I sit down and have a conversation with you, I have to be ready. Like. Mm. I can't go sit down and just not be. But this dinner, I'm prepared for. So we're going to be prepared for this Okay. Dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got yeah. Rob in there, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm probably sitting down with... Um, I'm probably going to sit down with Candace Parker right now. Mm. Mm-hmm. She's making another big shift, but she's kind of that... I'm going to put it on the show. She's probably that first wave of athletes that, like, from a women's sports perspective, like, the visibility she just brought, she took it on, where now the second wave is your Angel Reese, your Caitlin Clark, your Flage, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. where general hoopers, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all watch Caitlin. Oh, yeah, I watch Angel. Like, that's very like probably before that is um what is her name? Man, I'm blanking right now. She played for the she played for the Sky team for a little bit. Uh Sky Diggins. Skylar oh. Diggins. She was probably that that way where you're like, oh I know Skylar. Like and you may be watching a game or paying attention to looks like because in college she, she was because because when she was at Notre Dame she was she was like that kind of she, player yeah, where she just like yeah that was her she has the look she has she could talk she know how to get on camera and do the interviews she putting up twenty five mm-hmm. now the next wave is your Angel Reese your Caitlin Clark they can kind of beef now we are as general like general hoop fans are getting used to like oh yeah they talking shit on the court like I like that like you, you know what I'm saying I mean you you you. So you 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 have to respect it, and this is my this is my perspective on it. This is my perspective since you brought it up. It's a like just in terms of being like being fair on both sides because men, you know, we we talk trash all, all day. day. Yeah. So like it's it's something that we have to get used to for women because women be out there hooping and let them. I mean, talk just it, because they're women doesn't mean, mean that we can. should discount it. Or it doesn't make it any different. It's the it, same. It's, the, it's same. the same thing. And I, I think like that's why I would sit down with Candace because she is that 
you look back, McDonald's All American. She participated in the dunk contest. After that, first first time ever. Then after that, like I think two more participated after her. But again, pioneer sports. She got the shoes. She's now head of basketball championship, like multiple championships. Um, so I had my number two. Mm-hmm. That's a good. That's a good team. Mm-hmm. And. Um, I don't know. Let's see one more. Probably gonna go music and dinner. I'm probably sitting down with Little Russell. You know what I'm mm. That's a. That's I got a, another interview I want to send you with okay. him. Okay. All right. It's a, Ooh, you, is you, that you, the, you're gonna like? Is it? Did it come out recently? Not recently. It's probably, probably a couple months back, but it's just a marketing conversation that oh, you yeah. would enjoy. He go deep with it. Bro, he under. I'm, I'm so mad he, I didn't go see him at um. I wasn't in town for back Black on the Block, and he oh, was the performer. Oh, and then you put uh, yeah, you. I, I think that was the one where you can put the amount that you would pay for the ticket. Yeah, yeah. He he understands music and marketing different. Yeah, like independent. He is the new wave of independent mm-hmm, artists, mm-hmm. and it's like he knows I don't need to sell out an arena. I just need 300 people. And then I get them to pay this amount. Mm-hmm, and then, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like, he understands he, that. He, like, you, if you, if Nipsey left the book for you to know how to capitalize on using product and uh, time release activities, which, i.e., his CDs are only for a certain amount of time, you get, you pay $100, you get the CD, shirt, and all this stuff that, so it's all time release. And, the Russell has taken that same kind of concept. I'm going to open my home. You be intimate with, and I don't know if it's his real home. Maybe it is, but like, it feels so intimate that you're, eh, yeah, bro, here you go, 25. Like, now that 25 probably does cost you how much it costs to get into trees or whatever. Like, if we were here in Dallas, like, go to the concert venue, but he knows that some people make 25, some people may be like, I got a 40 piece today because I'm just like exactly I like it it's it's I, the same 40 I would have spent to go to a show and buy beers I can come here I can bring my own beer and drink like if you choose to drink like he knows that there's a concept behind that and I feel like I know which interview you're talking about but there's there's something about his technique that and his his blueprint and I, I'm gonna call it but like it's a Nipsey plus a Toby because mm. your Toby is your freestyle every day, like freestyle mm. captions, two oh minute songs. Then oh. Toby just, and we had him last year, the year before at McDonald's All American. And I got like a two minutes with him because he went to UNT, talk a little, you know, back and forth. But every Sunday, same spot, same like hit his girl, his um, girlfriend at the time doing mm. his hair, same spot, freestyle, 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 straight cameras. And he ain't stopped. Like, right now, you go watch a video. That camera pan in, and it's, like, it just do his thing. It's the same thing. And, like, with Russell, he's building on top of these playbooks, right? And he's just remixing them all and, and making his own kind of storyline. But that's my table. Man. Candace, Rob, the Russell. And we're going to talk money. We're going to talk marketing. We're going to talk marketing. Man. That's a big three right there. That's a big three. It's that's a unique a big, three, but it's a big three. That's a yeah. That's a that's that's three good people though. Yeah, yeah. That I like. I think when I think about that question, it's like who would I pull value from today? And mm. it's like actionable value. Like I can hear you, and I can relate to what you're saying immediately, yeah. and then go and like be like, I right, bet you can go. Man, and I can work for you. That's a, that's good. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah man. Appreciate that. Man, so uh, Marcus, please let the people know where they can find you, follow you, connect yep. with you, and then after that, then I'm got, gonna get the final thought out of you. Yeah. But yeah, man, let, let them know how they can find uh, you. Follow you can follow me. You can this count. Yeah. You can follow me uh, on Instagram, Marcus D Gilmore, uh, LinkedIn, Marcus Gilmore, YouTube, Marcus D Gilmore, Twitter, all of that. It's all Marcus D Gilmore across the board. Um, definitely hit me up, reach out. Um, I do take calls. I do do um, consulting calls um throughout the month and you know it was definitely an opportunity to one share just kind of my journey but also help you along uh especially if you're in the marketing space a business getting off the ground like this is the you know i enjoy having those conversations um 
and yeah, there's some big things on the way. Look out for something that potentially will come out in August, September, if uh, Jonathan stays on top of me about making sure I get it done. And um, yeah, and then I've dropped LinkedIn lives once a month um, talking about the experiential space as well. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. I was gonna say yeah. make sure to make sure to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, follow him on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Watch him on LinkedIn. We got we yeah. got the show working on that, man. Can yeah. try to get out the pilot phase. Yeah. I think I'm out of it. How many episodes have you? Have I've you done six. Yeah, you're yeah, 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 you're yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do me like okay. that. See, this is what I'm you. talking about. He, no, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> you, well, because no, because you know, just in terms of like in terms of podcast content. For one, I mean, for one, the number used to be like three episodes. Yeah. But it, it's it's right around that three to seven episodes. So do two more and then we're good. We're good. Yeah, right. do two more and we're good. I'm like, I'm picking up. That's why I asked you about certain things like understanding platforms, understanding how to be faster and like recording it out, recording it out and not oh, yeah, overthink, yeah, yeah. right? Like there's, you're in this time where you overthink, like, oh, how's somebody going to react? But it's yeah. really on me. Like if, as long as I'm comfortable and I feel good, it's got to release. It's yeah, go. put it you out. Put it out anyway. Yeah, because it's crazy. It's crazy. The stuff that we feel the worst about, or stuff that like I don't know, that's the one that hit. Yeah, like that's, that's when real. somebody's like, "Hey, that was that was that the was one. It. Yeah, that was the one that's for real. me. That's real. That was the one." But yeah, before we get out of here, I want you to I want you just to just to think for a second and then share what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete. Mm. One tip, and typically the audience is is, is uh, collegiate student athletes. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. know, so collegiate student athlete. Even though you share, you share, you share tips all not, through. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, um, I would say um, I'm gonna give two. Mm-hmm. If you get the opportunity to travel abroad in your collegiate year during your time. No matter what you think you're going to miss at home, you can train anywhere. You can figure out any way to train. You won't miss out. If you think you're going to miss out, you're not going to miss out. Go study abroad and go see what the world has to offer you at any anything. You may learn a new language. You may see a new window that opens for you. Um, don't, don't, don't think that what's happening in your city is going to really stop you from going to the next level now if you feel like you know you're going to the next level and you need to stay cool but if you feel like hey i could probably swing you know to a month it's only a month a month and a half in london and you live in nebraska you better go to london because it's cheaper to go on the school's dime in that kind of way um and then second is like understand that your journey is not i know you hear this a lot but your journey is different than everybody and be just value your time in that way um and be strategic again with how you plan your career after and it's okay not to know but it's a just know that there's there's a world around the court there's a, a world around outside the lines right like there's beyond the ball because beyond the ball means there's outside the lines like there's things to do you don't have to be a broadcaster. You don't have to be a ref. You don't have to be on the court. You can. There are spaces that are occupied by other athletes outside of the lines of the game. Um, and so seek those things and seek people on LinkedIn that have that insight as well. Again, I talked about like the experiential space and working in sponsorship. Again, I went to many games and I work with athletes and talent and autograph sessions I do the whole nine and at the center of it I'm a hooper who played a long time ago and still has that passion probably too much passion because I tore my Achilles playing I, basketball I saw that you was out there with the boot I was out there but you were still out there I was out there Man. but like I said that to say like the journey is different but at the same time when we get when it's time to match up and you say oh I went to the McDonald's All-American game I work on a McDonald's all American game. And I do I've done three. Or like I, I still have that same energy as if I was playing in a game and creating still for sports. So it's about like um that's my, my second advice is be intentional with your journey after after sports or after the game. Um and value that time. Travel overseas if you can. There it is, man. Yeah. I appreciate Marcus it. Did you more. Hey, I man. love it, man. I appreciate yeah. it. I always appreciate the time and 
um, the conversation is amazing. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I appreciate you, man. I always appreciate you. So, uh, family out there, uh, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, be sure, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure just to drop something down in the comments. You know, just let, let us know your thought. Let us know, uh, you know, what was your biggest takeaway. Uh, but if you're listening on Apple, uh, be sure just to, you know, share this episode with a friend. But family, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Peace and God bless. Thank <laughs> you.